Hi everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. Now when I was new to astronomy, I saved up and bought this 12-inch Dubsonian telescope. Now most people don't start with a telescope nearly this big, so when I saw this miniature version of this same Dubsonian for $99 on Amazon, I had to check it out. This box contains the Zumel Z100 Portable Reflector Telescope. And what I want to know is can this $99 telescope capture at least some of the joys and the wondrous views that I can see from this much larger telescope? Well, we're about to find out. This is Learn to Stargaze. Now there are a lot of telescopes available for around $100 on various websites, and most of them are pretty bad. Even worse, they have thousands of five-star reviews, and I don't know where these reviews come from, but you should be very, very skeptical. That's because it's extremely difficult to manufacture and ship a high-quality telescope for less than a few hundred dollars. In a previous video, we talked about what makes a good beginner telescope. Can it comfortably point straight up? Does it effortlessly move left and right and up and down? And does it stay where you point it? Now you may have noticed that these points have more to do with the mount than the telescope itself. And that's true. Many people consider the mount to be the most important part of the telescope. Now this telescope is on a Lazy Susan mount, and like my traditional Dobsonian telescope, this telescope should have no problem passing these basic tests. Now when it comes to a telescope's optical system, I prefer telescopes with low focal ratios. That's because they generally provide lower magnification for a given eyepiece, and that makes it easier to find objects in space. Then you can use a Barlow or a high-powered eyepiece to zoom in on the moon or a planet. I also prefer at least four inches or 100 millimeters of aperture. Aperture determines the resolution of the telescope, your ability to see fine details on your target. Having more aperture also generally means more brightness at a given level of magnification. Let's take Labrador clusters, for example. A telescope with a small aperture will show these as smudges because of the low resolution all the stars will blend together. A higher aperture telescope will show the individual stars in the cluster and generally have an overall brighter view of that object. Now on paper, this telescope has 100 millimeters of aperture, which is about four inches, and a focal length of 400 millimeters. That means this telescope is f4, and that's pretty low. Most $100 telescopes are f10 and higher. Based on these stats, this telescope should also pass my optical tests. But there's also other factors such as mirror quality, eyepiece quality, collimation, and focuser quality. For these, I'll have to test this telescope for myself. So let's see what's in the box and put it all together. Cue time lapse. Well, this is fantastic. The telescope comes almost fully assembled. Now I just need to see what's in this accessory box. Okay, so right out of the box, I can see that this telescope comes with three accessories. We've got a 10 millimeter eyepiece for zooming in on targets like the moon, and we've got a 17 millimeter eyepiece marked wide angle. Now on first inspection, these eyepieces are a little heavy, and to me, that signifies that the quality is actually quite high. This comes with a red dot finder instead of a finder scope, and I really like this. For me, this is the easiest way to find things in the sky. Be sure to have replacement batteries on hand in case you accidentally leave this on. This finder takes 2032 batteries, which you can generally get at the dollar store. The only assembly at all required for this telescope right now is to put the finder scope on. And if you look at the lens cap, there's a puck in the center that comes out, and this is for viewing the full moon to reduce the brightness. It also comes with a Vixen-style dovetail, which means you could attach this to almost any other telescope mount. There's also a port on the bottom of the mount if you want to screw this into a tripod. Now this might make it easier if you're stargazing with kids or simply don't have a table to sit the telescope on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is check the collimation and you do that by looking in through the eyepiece hole without any eyepieces attached. Now there are two things I'm looking for to check the collimation. I wanna ignore what's reflected in the primary mirror, and I wanna look at the primary mirror itself and make sure that it's centered in my field of view. And the second thing I wanna look at is the spider arms in the reflection. Are they all of equal length? So based on a quick inspection, it looks like this telescope was perfectly collimated at the factory, and hopefully I won't have to deal with that. 
Now, if the mirrors in this scope do appear out of alignment, it looks like the primary mirror is fixed in place and the secondary mirror can be adjusted by fixing these screws here. So I just want to take a moment to remind people that as of February 2021, I have no sponsors for my videos. So why am I doing this? I'm doing this because I believe, as astronomer Helen Hogue once said, that the stars belong to everyone. That the people who look up at the stars and dream of a better tomorrow are the kinds of people I want to be subscribers to this channel. Now before we go and test this telescope, we need to do the most important thing. Make sure that the finder scope and the telescope are pointed at exactly the same spot. So let's go outside and do that now. So again, the first thing we want to do before we use the telescope is align the finder scope to the telescope. And this is much easier to do when it's light out. And I'm going to use that distant chimney right there. And we're going to get the chimney in the finder scope and the eyepiece and just make sure that they are pointed at exactly the same spot. Now to adjust the finder scope, we use this knob right here, which adjusts the finder up and down, and this knob here, which adjusts the finder left and right. Now here's the view through the telescope, and here's the view through the finder, and so you can see they are pointed at exactly the same spot. All right, so to test this telescope, what we're gonna do is take the 17 millimeter eyepiece, put it on the iPhone adapter, and then what we're gonna do is move the iPhone adapter with the eyepiece back and forth between the two telescopes while they're pointed at the same target. So here are my final thoughts on this telescope. For around $100, this telescope is very well put together. But is it for everyone? Well, this is a tabletop telescope, and that can be a bit limiting if you're expecting to do sidewalk astronomy. And on a simple tripod like this, it's a little bit shaky. Also, because of the short focal length, it's not the ideal telescope for the planets and the moon. You'd need to add a Barlow or a high-powered eyepiece that the scope simply didn't include. I mean, the highest magnification with the included 10 millimeter eyepiece is only 40 times. And with the provided wide angle eyepiece, the magnification is just over 20 times, about the same as zoomable binoculars. But if you've moved beyond the planets and the moon, and you're all about beautiful star clusters and deep sky objects from dark skies, or if you expect to use this from a picnic table at a campsite, or as a designated travel telescope, this telescope is for you. I found the optics and the eyepieces superior to anything I've seen in this price range and even higher. The images were clear and with minimal aberration, and that means that this telescope really does capture some of the magic of its larger cousin. If I had to choose between this telescope and a nice pair of binoculars to go camping with, I'd definitely choose this telescope. Well, I hope you enjoyed this test of the Zumal Z100. Don't let your new telescope sit in the closet. For a quick reference of the best things to see in the sky, check out my book, 50 Things to See with a Telescope. And please subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any future videos. And remember, the future is looking up. <laughs>